World Ends With You is getting an anime. And while I was in the middle of writing this script, the impossible happened. A Toei sequel was announced. Now, this video is about neither, but it's as good a time as any for me to put forward a tiny, tiny theory I thought up a while ago. I'm eager to see if the new content we have on the horizon disproves or reinforces what we're about to discuss. What we're about to discuss, though, are spoilers for the end of the game itself, as well as the new content in the final remix version of the game. So if you don't know the story and want to go into that or the upcoming anime blind, then you ought to click away. I wish you luck, though. Without further ado, I have a question for those of you who stayed. How many times did Joshua shoot Neku? Take a moment to examine your answer to that, and the question itself. You might already have an idea where this is going. Okay, if you answered two, I think you're wrong. And someone correct me if I'm mistaken, but everyone in the fandom also seems to think he shot him twice. I thought this too for the longest time, supported by the sparse decent fanfiction I found and the even sparser IRL friends with the same interest. But then A New Day, the new content for the final remix, happened, and I got thinking. See, there's this sequence that gets used a few times in the game, where Neku falls to the ground to reveal Joshua pointing a gun at him. As of A New Day, this sequence gets used three times total, and when you look at all three of these instances together, there's a peculiar thing being visually implied there. Let's take a look. The first time it's used is for Neku's death, right? The thing that kickstarts his involvement in the story. The second time is at the end of the game when Joshua and Neku have their duel. The third time is in A New Day. So the first two times are when Joshua shot him, and the last is when Coco shot him, right? Well, no. Remember, the first instance of this animation is a fake-out. The third is some weird reveal that Joshua was even present. This and this are when Neku was shot. We know this for sure because we can see the implied impact of the bullet. But there is no such thing for the final game, though. Essentially, because two out of the three times we see this are when Joshua is shooting past him, and we get confirmation that Neku really has been shot this way for both of those scenes, what's to say that this isn't Josh shooting past him all three times? Because in most visual art analysis, that's the kind of scene direction that is understood to consistently mean specific things. And you know, when we only had the two scenes, it wasn't so weird that one had the impact of Neku being shot and the other didn't. Josh shooting Neku in that scene was a big reveal. Of course it gets special attention, and telegraphs very clearly that, yes, Joshua did actually kill him, for real this time. But now we have a new day, and, well, isn't it now a little weird that the unlockable sequel bait got a dramatic slowdown of Neku getting a bullet put in him, but the climax of the base game doesn't? So, Joshua never shot Neku in their duel. But wait, how did he win then? And we know Joshua won. Secret Report 22 makes this unquestionable. The thing is, though, looking at the conditions Joshua set, all he would have to do to win is fire. Hitting the target would be optional. And if Josh never intended to actually shoot Neku again, then this adds some more credence to what Josh said before the duel. He was implying that Neku should trust him. Finally, like, I mean, just look at Neku's face after he fell to the ground here. It's the same art used when he wakes up in the scramble crossing. That emotion is more bewildered than anything, especially compared to these. He doesn't look like he's bleeding out or being erased or anything beyond confused at the fact that he's in one piece. Well, then there we have it, folks. What really happened in the ending was that Joshua evaluated Neku's self-growth in their duel, one by firing his gun past Neku, and then rewarded this change by not annihilating Shibuya and restoring Neku and his friends' lives. What does that change exactly, though? Well, I don't really know. This is a mini-theory for a reason. I suppose Neku inviting him to Hachiko and saying he trusts him makes a little more sense this way. Thinking that he only killed Neku once does make it seem a little more like Josh developed from a super huge mega asshole to slightly less of an asshole. Considering that, I do think it could make a difference in Joshua's future development as a character and his involvement in the sequel. But how much of a difference? I don't know. 
like, this theory colors his future development differently, but does it change the shape of it, too? Hmm. I guess we'll have to find out in Neo. Anyway, thanks for watching! Uh, like and subscribe? Okay, uh, like and share with literally any 12 fan you can reach. Please and thank you.